Welcome to an integrated data enterprise, a blog and short video series speaking to the reasons to build an integrated enterprise and how to get there. This blog post is a second in the series and we discuss why a data fabric wins out over traditional architecture. A portion of this blog is an excerpt from the O'Reilly ebook, Rise of the Knowledge Graph, co-authored by Ben Sackley, Dean Alamang, and Sean Martin. If you haven't checked out the ebook yet, I urge you to do just that. At the time of making this video, it's the most current and comprehensive resource to help your organization get closer to achieving the vision of, that, of an agile, secure, and complete data integration. The concepts described in the previous posts, data fabric, data mesh, data-centric revolution, and fair data are motivated by a common awareness of the failures of traditional data architectures. These failure modes are common in any shared data situation at the enterprise, ecosystem, and global scales. The first failure mode is centralization. Centralized models contrast with the need to combine and understand data from myriad sources. Constant demand for insights creates a backlog of data searching and preparation requests. Syntactic, structural, semantic, heterogeneity, and centralization foster desire to mitigate the differences, which is good, but costly. We spend most of our careers and time trying to align our data sources, yet despite our best efforts, our systems do not provide the needed business capabilities. The next failure mode, data ownership. For our purposes, the data owner is the person or organization responsible for making sure the data is trustworthy and current, that service level agreements are satisfied, and that data and metadata are correct at all times. Consider this, if we have a single data hub, the ownership of the data is unclear. Is it the manager of the hub who does not own the contributing data sources? Making the hub manager responsible is not sustainable. Is it the individual data source managers? They don't own the hub, so it's not easy to implement. As a result, it is typical to find multiple copies of data of varying currency and no way of knowing the comparative quality of the data. Another failure mode is application centricity. That is today, data is represented and managed specifically in service to the applications that use it, making the enterprise data architecture application centric but applications are actually consumers or clients of the data. In an application-centric world, data is not provided as an asset in its own right and is notoriously difficult to reuse. Use case-driven application development is arguably the cause of application centricity and leads to what we might call perpetual ETL. Finally, an application centricity approach contributes to silos and leads to policies and processes to share data, even within an enterprise. So let's discuss another consideration, need to know versus responsibility to share. A cultural norm known as need to know has contributed to the current state of data affairs. In other words, one can view data if they have an express need to know. However, real world events such as the attacks of 9-11 have prompted a push from sharing information based on a need to know to a responsibility to share philosophy. Data mesh, data fabric, and data centric operations represent and support the shift from need to know to responsibility to provide. Responsibility to provide is also consistent with the World Wide Web, where documents are made available to the world. In this model, data consumers are expected to use the information in the documents effectively and responsibly. 
and a responsibility to provide world describing and finding data becomes key. In other words, enterprises must know what they know. We assert that the knowledge graph technology is the key enabler to the modern data management philosophy of responsibility to provide. In these new approaches to enterprise data management, a number of recurring themes come up in terms of requirements they place on data management. For example, we require flexibility in the face of complexity and changing data. We must be adaptable to the unforeseen. We need to describe things in terms of business concepts, not according to the physical schemas and data types. We must immediately answer unanticipated questions. We must become data centric as opposed to application centric. We must treat data as a product with service level agreements, customer satisfaction, et cetera. And we must implement fair principles of making data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. This blog post contains a concrete example of this dynamic using a familiar data set. The vision of the data fabric, data mesh, or data-centric enterprise is that every data resource will be treated this way. You'll see the details in the blog post and I encourage you to study the example. At Cambridge Semantics, we focus on the data fabric as the vehicle for this distributed data infrastructure. Although most of our comments would apply equally well to any of the other approaches we mentioned. Again, we believe that the knowledge graph is the key enabler to the modern data management approach of responsibility to share. This blog is the second post in a series of enterprise data integration. Keep an eye out for the next chapters, knowledge graph technology for a data fabric, and get, getting started on building your data fabric. Thank you.